Hey friend, I'm so excited to have you here for today's tutorial, the crochet jean jacket cardigan. Stay tuned. Now in this tutorial, you're going to need some Lion Brand Fast Track yarn. This is a awesome cotton blend um, tape style yarn. It's very unique and it's great for this project because it works up very quickly as it's a bulky weight yarn. This Fast Track yarn can be found on lionbrand.com. The link in the description box below will lead to a kit that Lion Brand has put together just for this project where you can get all of the yarn and a printed copy of the pattern. So make sure to check that out. You'll also need an L 8 millimeter crochet hook. I love the Clover Amore hooks personally. You're going to need a tape measure. That's optional just to double check your sizing and your gauge. You're going to need some scissors and you're going to need four stitch markers. I like using the Clover locking stitch markers like these, but you can use a bobby pin or a stray piece of yarn if you prefer. This cardigan is written in sizes extra small all the way up to 3XL for ladies with adjustments made um, for unisex sizing for men. So make sure to check out the link in the description box below for the written pattern and that will give you uh, the number of skeins of yarn you're going to need for each size. In this video I'm going to be making the size medium but uh, if you follow this video and would like to make a different size just make sure to follow those stitch counts that differ a bit from what I'm doing in the video. But this video should help you uh, get going here with the pattern. I've started with a slip knot and I'm going to start some chain stitches. This is going to create the yoke of the sweater. This is a top down cardigan so that means we're going to start with the neckline at the top and you're going to chain however many you need to for your size. For me working the size medium I need to chain 46 but again reference that pattern uh, linked in the description box below. So after I've chained 46 I'm going to single crochet in the second stitch from my hook and in each stitch all the way down. So here row one we're just single crocheting in each stitch all the way down. So for me I should wind up with 45 single crochets and then right after this row we're going to place those stitch markers. Uh, if you can single crochet you can make this um, cardigan. I truly believe that. It's very, very simple and straightforward with a little bit of shaping, but this entire thing is made up of single crochet, so if you're looking to tackle your first garment or your first sweater, this is definitely a good one to try. So now after we have all of our single crochets done, um, row one is finished. We're going to chain one and turn to begin row two, but before we do, we're going to place our stitch markers so that we know where we need to increase to begin shaping this yoke. So grab your stitch markers and I'm going to place them um, basically wherever the pattern tells me to. Different sizes again will require different placement, different stitches, um, but basically you're going to place all four stitch markers where the pattern tells you to for your size. So for me, again working the size medium, I'm going to count out the 7th, 16th, 30th, and 39th stitches from my hook and place stitch markers in each of those. So here I'm placing it in the seventh stitch from my hook and then moving on from there, the 16th, the 30th, and the 39th. Again, even if you are more comfortable with videos and you haven't learned to read patterns, you're uncomfortable reading patterns, or you just plain don't like them, um, definitely for this one, try to tough it out and glance at that pattern linked in the description box below because the sizing really is just so huge um, with this particular garment. It's not one of those one size fits all or one size fits most. It definitely needs to be tailored to you and you can follow along with what I'm doing but follow those different numbers number adjustments um, based on the size that you need to make. So sorry to keep reiterating that, but it's really, really important. So basically now that we have all of our stitches marked, we're going to single crochet along, working one single crochet in each stitch, and then any stitches that are marked, any stitches that have those stitch markers, we're going to work three single crochets into those stitches. So here I've single crocheted one stitch in each all the way up. To our first stitch marker, going to remove it and work three single crochets into that stitch. This is a triple increase. There we go. So there are three single crochets all in the same stitch right there. And what that's going to do is create the corner, one of the corners of our yoke of the sweater. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. If I've completely confused you, hang in there for a moment. 
Now we're going to replace our stitch marker in the very middle stitch of that cluster of three. So that's uh, going to be the second one of the cluster of three. Replace your stitch marker and then keep single crocheting one stitch in each spot all the way along to the next stitch marker and we're just going to keep repeating that. So all the marked stitches get three single crochets in those spots. Everything else gets one single crochet and this is going to be the same um, no matter what size you're working on. But again in the pattern it will uh, change a bit depending on how many rows you need to do but for now we're following the same method no matter what size you're working. So we've reached this next stitch marker. We're going to work three single crochets into that stitch. There is three. And we're going to replace that stitch marker in the center stitch or the second stitch of the three. This is very important. You're going to want to need to identify that middle stitch moving forward because basically we're going to be repeating row two several, several times and we don't want to get confused about where those increases need to be. So I urge you to um, definitely use stitch markers or bobby pins, whatever you have. So after I've finished row two, this is what we should be looking like. I've still kept all my stitch markers uh, in place and just basically moved them up onto row two and now we should have what looks like basically a rectangle. So those increases are creating our four corners of the yoke and we're going to be working all the way around back and forth back and forth always chaining one and turning in between rows and we're going to just keep repeating row two to keep increasing and create our entire yoke. So you're always going to work three double crochets in each of these marked stitches and that's just going to kind of take this same shape and make it a lot larger and longer. So go ahead and work up several more rows. Again, depending on what size you're making, it will require a different number of rows here. So here for the size medium, I've done all of my yoke. I've now completed the yoke and I've increased as much as I needed to. So you can see here that it's the same general shape here in the center as I had before. It's just gotten a lot larger and looks like a much bigger rectangle and that's exactly what we want. So here is the back, the sides, and then the front of our cardigan. So now at this point we're going to fold it so that we can start working on the torso. This here is the neckline in the middle and we need to kind of fold things up so we can visualize how we're going to continue on working the torso. So you can see here where all of your increases are. That's very important to need to identify um, because working around and around and back around in this yoke we kept increasing but now instead of working that way for the torso we're going to work basically in circles and you'll see what I mean. So being able to identify basically these increases in these corners is very important. I hope that you kept your stitch markers and kept moving them as you went row to row because that really does help create a nice even flat uh, rectangle without any uh, increases getting skewed anywhere. So now at this point, we're ready to fold it up and start working uh, the torso of this cardigan. So we're going to fold the front over the back, just like so. And now you might be able to better visualize what the yoke is and how it looks a bit more like a cardigan than it did laying flat. If you're still like, Ashley, that looks nothing like a cardigan, I totally get you and that's fine. It will very soon. So at this point we are ready to begin the torso and if you've gotten this far you are golden. The rest of this pattern is going to be easy as pie for you. I promise. It's just a lot more stitches. So basically here we're going to extend the length down from where we're at. So the width that we are at right now is going to be the width of the torso. We're just going to work straight down. We're not going to work any shaping because we want kind of a boxy more structured fit like a uh, real jean jacket would have. So here's how much yarn I have left. I'm still on the first skein so I'm going to need to join a second here very soon. Um, but basically, after we've worked all of our rows of the yoke and we're ready to move forward with the torso, we should be at one end or another of the uh, cardigan itself, and we should be back around to the front on one of those opening sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to reinsert our hook and get ready to go again. I've chained one and turned, and now I'm ready to work back the other way. And what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet in each stitch 
until we get to that first spot where we've increased. If you still have your stitch marker there, that's great. It's a lot easier to visualize. I personally don't have a problem picking out the middle stitch of my um, increases. So just go ahead and single crochet in each stitch until you get to that first increase or that first corner. And I'll show you what we're going to do. Again, this process and this method of beginning the torso, moving from yoke to torso, is going to be the same no matter what size you're working. You're just going to be on a different row number and your cardigan might look a little bit different in size. But the method is the same. So that's why I want to make sure to include a video tutorial for you guys on this project because although little details are different, the construction of this cardigan is the same no matter what size you're working. So here we can see where that increases, that cluster of three single crochet. So we're going to keep working one single crochet in each stitch until we get to the center or the second one of that cluster of three. So here we have one, two, three. We're going to work in that first one. We're going to go ahead and work in the second one. We're going to just make a regular single crochet. And then we're going to chain a couple of stitches. So go ahead and chain three. And then we're going to skip all stitches until the next increase. So right over here, the next corner, we're going to go ahead and single crochet into the center stitch from that cluster, or it might still have a stitch marker in it. Go ahead and single crochet. We can now see that this is connected. So what we're doing is creating the armhole here. That is the armhole right there. We're going to turn this around so that we can work back across the back of the cardigan. So we've single crocheted in that center stitch from our cluster and we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across the back. And we can see here that this is kind of joining things um, and creating the armhole and creating the shape of the torso. So just go ahead and single crochet in each stitch all the way back across the back of the cardigan. And once we've single crocheted all the way across the back, we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. So now I've gotten all the way across the back, almost to the other corner, and we're going to do the same process. We're going to work a single crochet in the first and second stitches of this cluster of three. So here's our cluster. We're going to work a single crochet in the first stitch and the second, then we're going to connect to the next corner, creating that armhole. So we're going to chain three, and then we're just going to single crochet in the center stitch of that other corner. So that's going to create our armhole here, and we'll work the sleeves later after we finish the torso. So go ahead and single crochet all the way back across and finish out this row, one single crochet in each stitch. Now from here on out, it gets really, really easy for the whole rest of the torso. Um, so this is how we should be looking. It's a little bit easier to visualize now because we actually have done armholes that we'll add sleeves to in a bit. And now from this point we're just going to single crochet in each stitch around, chain one and turn um, for every stitch and every row of the torso. Very, very simple, very, very easy. And now you just have to work up the length we're going to work around, we're going to turn, we're going to work back around, and we're going to just keep working like that over and over until we have the length that we need. Again, this will vary from size to size, so check out that written pattern. And just go ahead and work down the torso. Now I'm going to show you um, the second row of the torso just to show you what to do in those armhole areas um, down there with those chain stitches just to make sure that we're all on the same page and everything is really nice and clear. Um, but it's really very simple. So go ahead and single crochet. We've chained one and turned from the first row of our torso. We're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way to the armhole area with those chain stitches, that chain three. So now we've worked all the way down here. We're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So basically that's going to include the chain stitches and we're going to work a single crochet into the chain stitch itself, not into the chain space. So don't go around the entire chain, go into that loop from the chain, just as if you were working into the stitches of a foundation chain when you first start a project. Work into the chain stitches just like that. So you can see here that you can still see the stitch and see that line of yarn 
right under your single crochet. This is going to be important when we do the sleeve and we work around here because we're going to need something to anchor. We're going to need to work in the other side of that chain stitch. So make sure you get that right and you work single crochets into all three of those chain stitches under the arm and then just single crochet in each stitch across the back. This is how it should be looking nice, even and clean. And we're just going to keep working single crochets all the way around, doing the same thing on the other side. Here's how it looks after I've worked up a few rows of the torso. You should see just a nice, even, clean underarm, uh, underarm hole area. This is how it looks on the other side, and now this is how the length is starting to look. We're just going to keep continuing with this and single crochet in each stitch until you have the length that you need. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how mine is looking once the torso is done. I've done a little bit of the um, edging and I've done one sleeve. So I've worked a bit uh, in the past couple of hours to get this quite a bit further along than when you just saw it so that I can show you when I'm working the other sleeve and teaching you how to do the sleeve how that's going to look finished. So this edging I want to talk a moment with you about. So in the written pattern, I have you do the collar and then the edging. So you can see here where the yoke was and then where the torso was, where we stitched all the way around. And we can see where the armhole is. We can see where this chain stitch area was. But everything just looks nice and clean and polished. Now for this edging, in the written pattern, I have you do the collar and then the edging around um, those rough edges of the cardigan. Here in the video, I wanted to show you another option where I've just done the edging around the bottom of the cardigan here and up those middle centers um, of the front of the cardigan and worked around these corners. There's no collar right now on this cardigan. I wanted to show you what that neckline would look like and what the edging would look like without the collar. So the collar is definitely optional. In the written pattern, there's a very small adjustment um, from what you see here that's just a couple of extra rows of single crochet in a particular spot. The edging is really, really straightforward, um, and I didn't want to keep this video too, too long. Um, I wanted to keep it very attainable and easy, but basically for this edging, we've just worked a single crochet in each stitch all the way around the bottom, up those sides, up the middle, and worked into that rough edge, what was the rough edge here, of those uh, torso areas. So remember when the torso was still being worked and that edge was very rough um, and kind of uneven, I've worked one single crochet into the end of each row of single crochets up that center um, opening of the cardigan. So I've worked all the way up here, one stitch in each row, all the way up to the top where that yoke was in the neckline. I've worked a couple of single crochets in that corner and then you're just going to work around the yoke and around the neckline. So here again in that corner, when I'm turning the corner, I have a couple of extra single crochets and then I work around the yoke. And in these areas, I didn't work any single crochets because I wanted everything to be smooth um, and just like a nice gradual neckline. And we can see that this still looks really nicely finished and polished and it just looks a bit more like a normal cardigan rather than a jean jacket with that collar on it. So here I just worked all the way around the neckline. I worked a couple of extra single crochets again in this top corner, just like I did on the other corner. And then you just work back down the other side and around the hemline. It's very, very straightforward. And I know that when you're watching someone else do this on video, it can be a little bit confusing as I'm trying to walk you through it. But if you glance at the pattern and then you uh, watch the video as I'm talking you through this and you're holding your own cardigan in your hands, it really does make a whole lot more sense and it really all comes together in front of you. So that's how I did the edging. Again, the written pattern is gonna have the instructions for the collar, very, very simple. You're just going to add a couple of rows of single crochet up there at the top to the yoke area that we already have going. And there you go, you have a collar and you have a nice edged out cardigan. So once you've finished your edging, you're just going to finish off your yarn and you're going to weave any ends that you might have before we move on to the sleeves. And the sleeves are the last part of this cardigan. So at this point, we're almost done. We just have to add sleeves and they work up really, really quickly. If you've made it this far, 
the sleeves are a snap and you're going to be done before you know it. So this is how our unworked sleeve side is looking. I have one side with a sleeve done, so I want to show you how the sleeve should look when we're done so that I can kind of reference that as we make the sleeve together on the other side. So here if we look at the finished sleeve, we can see where those increases from the yoke were and we can see where the sleeve begins. So it should create kind of an L shape here with the yoke and those increases. We can still see that L shape where we work down on the torso and where that armhole stops. Same thing on the other side. That yoke kind of creates an armhole and then we're just going to work in rounds all the way around this armhole to build out that sleeve. So it's very, very simple and straightforward. Um, it's really not going to be difficult at all. You can see here on this first or second row we're going to have a little bit of a decrease to just to kind of shape the sleeve and make it a bit more fitted and not as billowy. Um, and then we're going to work a lot of rows of regular single crochet and then we're going to do one more set of decreases to bring it in right around the forearm area um, because a normal jean jacket that you would buy in a store is going to be a little bit more fitted through the sleeve um, with some nice seaming but instead of doing it that way through the forearm we're just going to work some decreases um, so that we keep everything nice and sleek and streamlined and that set of decreases should hit you right about below the elbow and then extend down with some normal single crochet so I'll go over all of this in detail here in a moment as we work the sleeve together but I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of what we'll be doing with this sleeve and then right around the cuff I just worked uh, the last row as slip stitches instead of single crochet so that I can have a nice little edging there um, to finish off that sleeve and look really really professional and almost store bought. Okay so here we are on the other side our unworked sleeve and probably how your sweater looks at this point. We have a new ball of yarn or continuing from a uh, in progress ball of yarn that you have. We're going to create a slip knot tighten it down onto your hook but then remove the slip knot we're going to join this yarn to one of the chain stitches under the armhole there so we're going to slip into one of those chain stitches pull up a loop and we're going to chain up one so now we've joined our yarn to this armhole and we're going to just single crochet in each stitch all the way around again in those chain stitches you're going to work into the other loop of the chain the loop that we did not work before, we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Just regular single crochets here. It should be very easy to work into this armhole because um, it's the side of the yoke and you're working into the tops of stitches just like you normally would. We're not working into a rough edge here, which is really nice. Usually when you add sleeves to a cardigan that's not worked with a yoke, you're working into a rough edge and it tends to look a little messy. So now we've worked all the way around. We're ready to uh, join, but we're not going to work join rounds here. We're just going to keep single crocheting because we don't want a seam running behind uh, the underarm of our cardigan here. So we're just going to work in um, unjoined rounds. We're just going to keep single crocheting around. But in row two here of the sleeve, we're going to work a single crochet decrease. So that's insert your hook, pull up a loop in the first stitch, insert your hook and pull up a loop in the second stitch. We have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So that is a single crochet decrease if you need to rewind that and watch it again or you need to look up a single crochet decrease and how to do it if you haven't done one before. There are a lot of great videos out there. So we've worked one single crochet decrease. We're going to single crochet in each of the next three stitches. This is the same for all sizes of this pattern. So three single crochets and we're going to work another decrease. So pull up a loop from the first stitch, pull up a loop from the second stitch, and pull through all three. And then single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And we're going to just keep repeating this all the way around until we get basically back around to where we started. Again, depending on the size that you're working, it's going to vary a little bit how many times you repeat this going around because your armhole might be a different size than mine. So now we've gotten almost all the way back around to the beginning of this round. And we're going to work a single crochet decrease because we're ready to repeat again. We only have four, I believe three or four stitches left of this round, but I'm going to go ahead and work another decrease and then single crochet in any remaining stitches of the round even though it might not be a complete repeat of the 
sequins. So then moving forward, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around and we're going to work many, many rows of single crochet. We're going to work all the way until ro round 30 here. No matter what size you're making, you're going to follow the same basic sleeve pattern. There's going to be a little bit of variance later on, but basically no matter what size you're making, go ahead and work up to row 30 or round 30 here on the sleeve before you make your next set of decreases. So we're just going to keep single crocheting in each stitch around. Again, don't join your rounds here on the sleeves and uh, just go ahead and work up several, several rows. This is how it should be looking. Those decreases here are a little bit visible, but when someone else is looking at your cardigan, I promise they won't even notice they're there. It'll all just blend in a sea of single crochets. So don't worry too much about those decreases being visible. People who don't crochet will never, ever notice them. So after we've worked up several more rounds, we can see how the shaping and the decreases are kind of pulling in our sleeve um, and making it really a nice shape for fitting to the arm. So I've done about eight or nine rows here of single crochet past the um, decreases and you can still see where they are, especially if you're a crocheter and a seasoned crocheter especially. Um, you can probably pick them out, but again, they're really unnoticeable to anyone who's not uh, looking for flaws in your garment. So here I have the second set of decreases. Now in the second set, you're just going to decrease and then single crochet in each of the next two stitches as opposed to three, which is what we did with our first decrease. And then you're just going to work a bunch more rows of regular single crochet. And depending on what size um, uh, garment you're making, it's going to vary how many more rows of single crochet you do past the um, second set of decreases. But again, that written pattern below is going to really help you out with the different uh, numbers and the specifics on that. Now after we've worked all our rounds of single crochet, we're just going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way around to finish this off and give a really nice professional looking edging. And remember slip stitch, you're just going to insert your hook in the next stitch, pull up a loop, and pull through without yarning over. So just go ahead and slip stitch all the way around and make sure to repeat this whole process on the other sleeve. So we can see here how it should be looking once we get all the way back around. We're just going to finish off our yarn and we're going to weave all of our ends and then move on to our second sleeve. If you need to rewind this video and watch me start the sleeve again so that you can work your second one, please feel free to do that. And once you've finished both sleeves and you've weaved all your ends, you are just about finished and your jean jacket cardigan is ready to wear. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for lots more fun videos.